I, I don't really have to worry about Luke. I, I don't think he really knows what he's doing. All these people, they like waited in an hour to download the data today. I ran to a different house to get a better Wi-Fi connection. You know, I had a pivot, but I'm from startups. So I pivot all the time. It's going, it's going bad. It's not good. Welcome to Iron Analyst. I'm your host, Kenji. Today, seven data practitioners will compete for the title of the Iron Analyst. They'll each be given a mystery data set. They must clean it, analyze it, and create a spectacular visualization or dashboard. These are your seven contestants. What up, dead nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst. And for this challenge today, I'm gonna to be using my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Specifically, I'm gonna be using Power BI. We'll see if it's up for the challenge. What's up guys, my name is Avery Smith. I'm a data scientist and for this challenge, I'm going to be using my 2012 MacBook. It is a little bit old, but it is still kicking. I'll probably end up using Python, but it also kind of depends on what the project entails and what I get myself into. We'll see. Hey guys, my name is Shashan Kalanithi. I'm a senior data engineer at Bet Fanatics. I'm using a base model M1 MacBook Pro with eight gigs of RAM and I will probably be using Python for most of my analysis and maybe create a streamlit dashboard with it. Hey everyone, my name is Hunter Kempf. I'm a data scientist at Cloudflare. I'll be using my ZBook Studio and for software, Python, Pandas, maybe Streamlit. Hey everyone, I'm Keith. I do data science tutorials on YouTube. I'm probably going to be using Python and specifically the Pandas library. Not only is it a great tool to use, I love the fluffy animal. What's going on everyone? My name is Mark Freeman and I'm hoping to be the next iron analyst. I've been data analyst, data scientist, and now I'm doing data engineering, a little bit of data strategy. What I'm planning on using is Python. If I have some time to do some cool visualizations, maybe Canva, but if I have to be really quick and scrappy, gonna use Excel or Google Sheets. Hey, I'm Zach Wilson. I'm a staff data engineer at Airbnb. I'm gonna stick to the basics. I'm just gonna use like Python and Tableau. So I want to optimize for speed because we really don't have that much time here. Let's go. Today's mystery data set is indeed job postings data. You have over 40 gigabytes of data that are broken into over a hundred different files. You must download it, clean it, analyze it, and create a beautiful data visualization. Are you ready? Yes. Let the battle begin. <laughs> Our competitors will have an hour and 30 minutes to complete this challenge. They will also get an extra bonus five minutes for every piece of bright data swag that they're wearing as a special advantage that comes from our sponsor. You can also try your hand at this analysis with a sample from the actual data. We got this data from Bright Data, which is the number one web data platform. Special thank you to them for sponsoring this video and making the Iron Analyst possible. Hey there, viewers. Okay, so we have Luke Barus here. Luke, can you describe to the audience what your approach is in this kind of challenge? There's a lot of data here and a lot of job descriptions. I've focused in the past at looking at data analysts, data scientists, and data engineer jobs. So that's what I'm gonna focus on is those three, drawing insights of salary, location, degree requirements, and probably top skills. Do you see anyone that you know, you're know you like, okay, this is gonna be a serious like problem? I think uh, Shashank. But, but I think it's because he has like a community behind him doing a live session and having people help him. So I think he's sort of cheating. Maybe he should get banned. Maybe we should consider that, Ken. Yeah, maybe. A gauntlet thrown to the judges. We will see what happens, but thank you very much, Luke. Much, much luck to you in the competition. Okay, so Shashank, what do you think about the data so far? In the real world, it's all about looking at all the stuff that you could be doing and then limiting it to what you actually can do. So I have about an hour left to actually like go through all this data. I'm only gonna look at one CSV right now, create my dashboard, and then from there, see how many other pieces of data I can get in there. Mark over here is working with a lot of what looks like text data. So he's going in a different direction than I'm gonna go in. So I'm actually more interested to see what everyone else does. So Mark, how are you feeling about this? You know, I had a pivot, but I'm from startups. So I pivot all the time. The way I'm about to go is I'm gonna split it up using the location data and I filtered for all uh, descriptions that had data in it. I'm just gonna assume that's a data role. If you have data in the role, you're a data professional. I'm gonna group by the state and determine how many data roles by state to help you determine where you should move to if you wanna be a data professional. Didn't realize the dog was there. Um, so we're here with Lulu. How are you feeling about this competition so far? 
Okay, that's a positive sign. Who do you think is going to win? Fascinating. Thank you, Lulu, and we'll see you at the finish line. Uh, first off, I want to say hi to my mom, my dad. They're watching back home from New Hampshire. I miss you guys. I'll see you soon. What was the question? I'm really diving into the location-based data from these job postings. I don't know exactly what yet, but that's my focus right now. And it's a lot of data, but, you know, we're just going to process it. There's some serious competition, but I'm a serious competitor. Ooh, big words. I'm just saying, all these people, they, like, waited in an hour to download the data today. I ran to a different house to get a better Wi-Fi connection and then ran back. And so I just think that that puts me at a different, uh, you know, a different level. No one's downloading anything over here. I think we've, we've hit a gold mine. I need all the advantages I can get. We've got Zach Wilson here. A big thing that I was looking at is that like a lot of the data in this was kind of useless. A lot of that freeform text data, I think that's kind of a red herring for a lot of people. They might try to like process it and stuff like that. It's a lot of data, but you know, we're just going to process it, you know, one file at a time. I'm going to be looking more at like time series data and probably like trying to take some of these dimensions, like the job titles and trying to standardize them into more nice buckets as opposed to having like a million different categories of things. Right. I definitely think that Luke is going to he's he's, he's going to be throwing his weight around for sure. I'm, uh, I, I might take a silver medal this game, but we'll see. So Hunter, what is it like working with this data set? Pretty big data set. So I'm just analyzing kind of the first chunk here, trying to get a feel for the data first and then build kind of a, a nice idea of what the visuals I, I need. I, I don't really have to worry about Luke. I, I don't think he really knows what he's doing, but uh, <laughs> I think that the rest are all, you know, very, very strong competitors. Competitors, we are halfway through our allotted time. I hope you're on to data visualization already. So we're here with Tina, one of the judges for this competition. Tina, can you tell us, like, what, what are you seeing so far? Um, I think the most interesting thing is you have a mixture of data engineers and then there's data scientists, data analysts. You can really see the difference in the approach for this. For the engineering approach, it's very much about getting something out, filtering, like doing all these things in order to get something out first, as opposed to a data science data analyst, they approach it in a very linear fashion. I do think though, that the engineers do have an advantage in this particular situation. So I'm really looking forward to seeing like what people show up with and then. Seattle data guy, he's a judge on the, you know, for this competition. In a competition like this, what would you be looking for? Really succinct uh, insights for anyone who wants to win this. They would have focused in on a very small subset of that data and just tried to make something very clear and, and concise. Because otherwise, if you try to take too much of it on uh, all at once, uh, you're just not going to get much out of it. We're good to go. Uh, we're on track. We only have 10 minutes left, but we're going to throw something together. I'm feeling really confident. I have a dashboard here now that really describes like all the necessary skills that are needed and what percent of the roles are and really breaks it out between manager, analyst, engineer and data scientist. So I'm really excited. I'm, I'm feeling really good about this dashboard. I'm legitimately like I'm like I'm like feeling my chest clump up like I'm legitimately very stressed out. Contestants, we have five minutes remaining. Reminder, contestants wearing Bright Data Swag get an extra five minutes. It's crunch time, we gotta get to it. Hopefully it'll be kind of pretty, but it's not gonna be comprehensive and like what I want, but hopefully it's still a little pretty, but it's not pretty yet. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you guys so much for supporting me through this live stream. This was an incredibly stressful experience, but I think we actually have a solid visualization, a solid dashboard coming up. Ben Rogajan, otherwise known as the Seattle Data Guy. YouTuber and former data engineer at Meta. Josh Starmer, founder of the YouTube channel StatQuest. Also a renowned author of the StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Machine Learning. Tina Huang, YouTuber and former data scientist at Meta. All right, Luke, tell us what happened. What I wanted to look at mainly was job skill requirements. 
and mainly like a comparison tool between top tools. So we'll say data analyst. Does the calculation, so we can see Python's top skill for programming, SQL over Excel, and then Tableau and Power BI are pretty close. Yeah, uh, I'm just curious, uh, those, those counts seem a little low. How much of the data were you actually able to process? We had, what, 40 gigabytes of data, and I compressed it down or brought it down to only specifically to uh, data analysts, data engineers, and data scientists, and so it was about only 8,000 rows after I got finished. Thank you, Luke. Please send the next contestant in. So Avery, what happened out there? I wanted to see if the number of jobs has gone down recently posted on Indeed. And I thought, why not supplement this data with unemployment data? But as I got into the data set, I found out that the Indeed data set only has like three months. So I decided to pivot. And so what I created for you is a portrait of you two together with a word cloud from the words inside of the descriptions of these different jobs. Featuring a cat and the uh, dinosaurs yeah. as well. And there's supposed to be words in there. I'm not exactly sure where they went. Thank you, Avery. Please send in the next contestant. Will do. Thank you, Jeff. What we're looking at over here is an overview of data engineering jobs where I like to look at specific companies, the average company rating of all the companies that you've selected, and then where they're located, and then a subsection of salaries. So you see, the second we have Deloitte, a big consulting firm, obviously there's they have locations all over the country, right? Uh, but prior to that, with the smaller companies, you can see that you know, the location one is well distributed. So for example, if you're looking for a job, this is a good way to see, okay, uh, what's the location flexibility I get with this company versus another company? What do you think the goal of someone using this should be? Like, what would they do with it? I would hope that this dashboard allows people to look at like a, a wide swath of jobs all at once in a data intensive format instead of like individual jobs one, one at a time. So I, I focused on only job titles that contain the word data in there. This first chart here shows like the proportion of data roles over time in this data set. Does it need a bachelor's degree? Does it need SQL? Does it need Python? So this chart here actually shows uh, when these jobs were created. You want to look for jobs on Friday, right? Because Friday is when, especially those data scientist jobs on Friday, that's when you have a really high percentage of role, new roles that are being posted. Is it possible that the dates got shifted by one? It makes it doesn't make sense to post on Saturday yeah, and not Monday, right? Mm -hmm. Is it? You're, you're probably right. Where things could be shifted by one, like yeah. or like maybe like a there's a UTC like a time zone problem or something like that. I just naively plugged in the date from uh, whatever was in the data source. So I have top ten data job counts by U.S. locations. It's a sample from Indeed, and this can help you decide where is the action happening in the country for data jobs. Remote jobs are really in right now. Texas, really surprising. I thought California's gonna be the top, we got Silicon Valley. Where, where was New York on this? Mm. New York. Surprisingly, for my sample, New York scored very low on it. Not even on the thing. How did you choose the sample? Yeah, that is a great question. Again, V1, and I'm making the assumption that the blocks were split up into 5,000 or 50,000 rows and that the blocks were just randomized. And with more time, I can double down and do some proper sampling. Due to time constraints, I just have the first chunk data. I took basically the full uh, chunk data and tried to pull out uh, from the job title, the keyword data analyst, data engineer, and data scientist, how many there were in, in the Indeed postings. I built a word cloud here from the job description, basically words that you should include in your resume if you're trying to match a job posting. If you're a recent college grad, you don't know where you want to be. You're just a small town kid from New Hampshire. That's why I introduced my visualization today. So you can see the, the most lit up spots are where the most jobs are. And as you know, this kid from small town New Hampshire, I know where the opportunities lie. I know where it makes sense to move. Yeah, did you filter the data or is it just like all jobs? It's all jobs. That's in V2, we already have it planned out. It's on the timeline. What are the big jobs in, in, in Portland? There's a location that is hard to put on a heat map, but is a very popular spot for jobs these days. But there's a uh, county, or actually it's called a hamlet in Oregon called Remote. So I utilized this strategically to make sure that you knew that there was remote jobs available. That's awesome. Judges, what were your thoughts? Did any project stand out? Keats really stood out to me. Oh, was that just because he sold the story? Was the, was the graphic equivalent to the story? The story matters a lot, doesn't mm. it? I liked Luke's a lot. It was simple, easy, like you knew what you were getting, mm. but it was also clean and easy and 
well designed. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Luke and Zach both were a little more like yeah. Zach's a little, there was a lot, so it could have been a little more concise. But like you could learn a lot from it if mm -hmm. you spent time with it. But whenever there's a word cloud, I was like, what am I gaining from this? I see, especially since there's a lot of stop words. It might be pretty, but uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to know from this. I, I thought Shashant was pretty cool too. You could select a job. Yeah. And it would say, it's here, and it's here, and it's here. Mm -hmm. That was unique. And I thought valuable in terms of like, Keith's just kind of showed you jobs overall, but it didn't say, I want this type of job, and then just highlight those regions, yeah. including remote. Do we have a consensus on who's a winner? Hmm. I think we have to add up the points. Yeah. Oh. Let's, let's, take it, let's take it to the adding chamber. You all worked very hard. We saw some impressive results. Now, the iron analyst is Shashank Kalanathi. Judges, why did you select Shashank? Because it was awesome. We all kind of felt it was somewhat useful, obviously, like you could actually search uh, specific job titles and, you know, I'm sure with a little more time that the salaries could have kind of gotten parsed out a little more and that actually provides a lot of information. I agree. I think it was a very practical approach to things and the reasoning behind why you did it made a lot of sense. Thank you. Practical is the best compliment I could ever get. You are now the Iron Analyst. Yeah! We need a YouTube channel. <laughs> get a belt. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's go. What are some of the things that you learned specifically uh, in this event? I will say the web data stuff from Bright Data was just like mind blowing. As like what you could actually like, I, I thought LinkedIn data was just you, like without just an insane amount of work, you couldn't get it. Like a work that basically invalidates the, the process of getting it. The ability to do that is actually something I really want to play around with like after the meetup is done. Thank you guys so much for all the support. This is kind of like the real stuff that like we do as data analysts. Like you're given a timeline, you have to take all the data, you have to crunch it down to something that's manageable and eventually do something with it. So thank you guys so much for the support and uh, that's it for the live stream. Because of the groundwork laid in the last meetup, uh, there's some actually like just great friendships that I'm like developed a lot more in this uh, meetup and we actually got to make some great content as well. Amazing. Thank you so much, Shashan. Thank you.